Hello everybody, welcome back to the OAG RC. It is the last race of the Orchard Raceway. Crikey, what a year this has been. Thunder Dragon needs three points. It needs three points because currently the hot shot is out in front. Can it get those three points against the Frog? Now the Frog has not had a great performance in the finale. It beat some big competition to get here, but unfortunately, it seems to have fallen at the final hurdle. However, however, anything can and does happen out on the Orchard Raceway. Can it create an upset? Or will the Thunder Dragon show its pedigree and romp out to three points? Let's get out on the track and see what happens. Frog three. Three, two, one, go. Oh, it's the story of the finale, isn't it, for the frog? You just can't put together a decent run of laps. Seven laps that time. What I will say for it, though, is it did do its fastest lap of the session. 7.51, and that was its fastest lap of the entire finale, the entire series, the entire season. Saved it till right at the very, very end. So, at least the frog is taking home a point. Yeah, because it did draw... With the Thunder Dragon. And you, those of you out there are going, why did the Thunder Dragon do 12 laps? Um, it's because I made a mistake. And I hadn't realised that the Thunder Dragon uh, still had another three laps to run on the timer. And I stopped. So that's on me. That's on bad driving. And those of you are going to go, oh, rerun, rerun it, rerun it. Well, you know, hey, look, 
it's a mistake, right? I made a mistake on the day. It could have flipped on one of those last three laps. My driving is not the best, best of times. It, whatever happens on the Orchard Raceway happens. And in this particular instance, we did not complete the time that was supposed to be completed for the Thunder Dragon. So it only did 12 laps. However, within those 12 laps, it did produce what can only be described as an absolute breakneck time. 6.2 seconds, which means that a round of applause for the Thunder Dragon, I think, is in order. It has the fastest lap record on the Orchard Raceway of 6.2 seconds. Um, prior to this, I think the uh, TT02B had done it in 6.27 so the Thunder Dragon is seven tenths quicker. Sorry, seven hundredths quicker than the TT02B. Last season's champ. Now, I never would have thought we'd have been seeing something that went around the track faster than the TT02B this season. But we have. We have. Now, where does that leave the league table? Let's switch over, pull up the league table, and see where it finishes before we start awarding out bonus points so here is how the league table is looking before we start dishing out bonus points the hot shot still sits in first position six points in total 31 laps fastest time of 6.87 the thunder dragon is on five points it picked up a point for that draw with the frog it moves into second 30 laps in total 6.2 the ultimate drops down to third it's got four points 40 laps 6.47 fastest time. And the frog is at the bottom of our table. One measly solitary point. It's only 16 laps out of 45 run. And a fastest time that is almost a second or over a second slower than two of our competitors with 7.51. Now, it's time to start dishing out some bonus points. Now, if you remember at the start of the season, I will start off the finale. I said there would be bonus points for two different criteria. First one would be who finished with the fastest laps. The second one would be dished out for the number of bonus or a bonus for the most number of naps completed. So let's do fastest time first. The fastest time goes to the Thunder Dragon with 6.2. So it gets three additional bonus points. Second was the Ultima. So it picks up two. One for the hot shot, and unfortunately, a zero for the frog. What that means now is the hot shot is on seven. The thunder dragon is on eight. The ultima has six, and the frog still has one point. So the thunder dragon has leaped into first position with the hot shot dropping into second. Now, the next set of bonus awards are for the total number of laps achieved. The ultima picks up three points giving it a total of nine. The hot shot picks up two, giving it a total of nine. The thunder dragon gets a point, giving it a total of nine. And the frog gets nothing, a total of one. We have a three-way tie for the championship. All three are tied up with the exact same number of points after all bonuses have been applied. Oh dear. Oh dear. I did prepare for this eventuality though. And what I decided is should this happen, we would look at the average time achieved over all of the laps that they have done. And those average times would be applied to give us an average time per vehicle. So... I'm just going to rub off this final column over here because we've awarded the fastest points. And I'm doing this in real time, so we're probably going to make a mess of this in a minute. And we're going to go now with the average time. Okay? So the average lap time. And I'm just going to look at my very complicated spreadsheet and tell you that the frog, for what it's worth, did it 16 laps and did an average of 9.51, which is not the best average to be taking into the final. 
Where do you want to go next? Should we just work our way up the table? The Ultima did it in 8.58. Currently means it's going to be in first place. The Thunder Dragon, average time over 30 laps, 7.58. Five, nine, almost an entire second quicker on the average than the Ultima. The Hot Shot, our current leader, had an average of 8.65, which means the Thunder Dragon is the Orchard Raceway champion for 2023. Second place is the Ultima and third place is the Hot Shot. Well, what an end to the season. The Thunder Dragon now proudly wears OR 2023 first on the side of its body. Its first award on the Orchard Raceway. First place. Now, if I wind the clock back, I think you'll remember that when I was doing the draw, I said something about this one only going on and winning the whole bloody thing. Guess what? It only went on and won the whole bloody thing. It was closer, wasn't it? It could have gone any way, to be, to be frank. And I did consider, you know, whether or not I should have given it an additional point because I stopped it early on that final run. So for those of you who were going, oh, it's not fair, it's not fair, it didn't do its 15 laps, it still won anyway. So what does it matter? Although I did feel pretty bad because that was my mistake and I shouldn't have stopped on that... Um, on that 15, on that 12th lap. But man, what a great RC this was back in the day. And it still is a great RC. It took it out in the Orchard Raceway, which is a bumpy old undulating, tiny little circuit in my back garden, really. And it's not a proper RC track by any means of the imagination, but it just shows how competent the chassis was because it soaks up the bumps. It is, I mean, I know I rolled it that one time, but for the most part, it is pretty composed under all the jumps and the undulations that go on through the Orchard Raceway. I'm really impressed by it, really. And and when I was building this, if you go back and watch my build video for this, I wasn't that impressed with it. I was building up the front, building up the rear, and it was kind of a bit meh about the whole build. And then when I bolted it all to the chassis at the end, I finally went, actually, I really like this. It looks good. It's fun. I've got a funky... X-Wing thing that I did with it, which, you know, yeah, in hindsight, looks all right, doesn't it? But it's not the best RC that I've got, the best looking car that I've got. But, yeah, it drives all right, does this one. That is the end of the Orchard Raceway. Um, but it's sad, really, because there's been a, a huge amount of work gone into this. And um, it's, I suppose, quite nice that everybody watches along and passes their comments on to me. And I really enjoy this this whole part, editing up videos and putting them out and chatting to people. It's the part of the hobby that I think I enjoy the most. Um, and I like to think that we're doing something a little bit different over here at the OAGRC. And we're not just sort of, um, I don't know, copying what all the other channels are doing and trying to be our own thing to the community, really. And I'm going to keep on doing it. And I like, and and I, I watch an awful lot of RC channels. And I like all of them that I watch. Um but I, I have a special sort of uh, an admiration for those of us who are recording times and trying to identify which cars perform best in our own little ways. You know, I know Dom does his stuff. Um, and I've got a huge amount of respect for the amount of time and energy that goes into that Dom because I know setting up the tracks and working out the times and everything that goes in, it's hard work. Um, Jeremy um, at Hey Dad RC gets out and does it on his track, the Windy Hill, um, and, you know, I know how much energy and effort goes into doing that. Um, then we've got um, uh, Vintage Backyard RC, who really was the inspiration behind what I do with the OAG. Um, you know, he just such a passion for RC and and the way that the vintage RC are restored. And then he puts them out there on the track, track and sends them over jumps that I'm not putting my RCs over, that's for certain, but... Man, you know, it's, it's it's the amount of energy and time that goes into making every single one of those videos that he does there at uh, Vintage Backyard. Uh, you, we just should have so much respect for people that they give up their time to make these videos. And I'm, I'm not sort of 
saying anything against all the other RC channels out there because I watch as much as I can do, um, which is tough when you're creating content yourself and working and, and being a dad and all the other stuff that comes with life. But, but you know, the, the energy that goes into everyone's videos, whether you're doing a track, whether you're doing a running video or a build video is absolutely fantastic. And, you know, a massive round of applause for everyone in the RC community this year that has put out some great content, some great videos. And I applaud you all. Um, and for those of you that run on tracks and do the time trial videos, you know, props to you. Cool. I've waffled enough. That's me out. I will put down some little uh, montage videos of all of the cars with their little uh, award scribbles on the side of them. So you can see that they've all been awarded their first, second and third places. Um, and that's it for this season. We go again next year. I'm sure we will have a slightly different format for 2024 again. Not going to mix it up too much, but we will do something slightly different again. Um, but more on that as we get closer to the start of the season, because I'm still working those plans out. Next things from me, we're going to be building some RCs. Uh, one of which you've already had a sneaky look at because we've done the top force. Um, and we've got a TL01B somewhere that's being built. I can't remember where I put that. It's somewhere in the studio here. Um, we've got a Optima Mid to build at some point. Um, and I'm still debating whether there's going to be something else. But for now, that is me signing off. Guys, thanks ever so much for the support in the season. And I'll see you all soon on the OAG. I'll see. Bye for now.